Um, I'm just going to wait for a little bit to come in. But there were a lot of people who said that they missed yesterday's live when I took my braids out. And so I decided to come, go ahead and come on and do another one. I actually waited until um, this morning to shampoo my hair because I was getting lazy. But I left on that, that the tank. Yeah, I left on the detangler and it really helped soften my hair overnight. So that was really super good conditioning. But this is my hair. Hi guys. Hello. Say hello. So I can know who you are. This is my hair. Freshly shampooed, deconditioned. And I used, uh, I didn't bring it with me. Okay, I used the melanin hair care that I had. Hello, queen. That I put on there yesterday from, um, that I had bought from Natural 85 really nice hi guys so i'm coming on a little bit later because some people said they missed it yesterday so i'm coming on a little bit later and this is my hair in all of its glory i am type 4a i have coarse hair i have lots of shrinkage hi nevi lot like lots of shrinkage i'm gonna pull it down so you guys can see okay lots and lots of shrinkage like probably 50 60 percent shrinkage once it dries it'll it'll shrink all the way up <laughs> Hi. <laughs> yeah, let me move this over so I can see the comments. I can barely see them. Yeah, so this is me. And so I want to come on today and twist my hair. And this is what I plan on doing. I plan on, because I'm trying to be more visible, I plan on twisting part of my hair here on YouTube. And then I'm going to go over to Instagram and do a live over there at Your Personal Hair Coach and twist the other part there. So I already have it parted down the middle. I'm going to show you the product I'm going to be using. I am really loving the Melanin Hair Care. And I have today, this is the Twist Elongating Style Cream. And I have been dying to try this product. So yesterday I used, I, I hate that I don't have it. Yesterday I used the um, conditioner. It was like in a pump. And um, that worked out really, really well. It detangled my hair like fantastic. I love, 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 love loved it. And I also use that as a conditioner to uh, do my deep conditioning treatment. So today I'm going to be using this. I have not opened it. This is my first time ever using this product. I don't know what it smells like. The conditioner was very nice. And actually somebody who was on the live, um, they actually, matter of fact, let me just go run and get it. And I'm going to take you guys with me. Uh, <clears throat> let me go run and get it so I can show you guys what the product looks like. Oh, I tripped on a cord and I covered my camera. Okay, I'm running to my bathroom to get the product or wherever it is. Let's see. Oh, here it is. Okay. I have it so you guys can see. This is what I used on my hair yesterday. And I absolutely positively love this product. I feel like I'm doing a vlog. <laughs> yeah, let me close this door here. Hey, Debbie. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I'm back to my spot. Hold on, guys. I keep covering up the camera. Okay, so I'm talking about this. This is what I used yesterday, and it's called Multi-Use Softening Leave-In Conditioner. And you can use it as a detangler. You can use it as a leave-in. You can use it as a conditioner for your hair. And it was one other use that you can do. Yeah. I use it as a detangler, and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And the only thing I don't care about is the smell. And I'm just being honest. It doesn't smell bad. It's just that I'm not a person who likes like medicinal smells. And it doesn't even smell medicinal. It smells like spearmint. And I actually do like spearmint. So that's why this product is working for me. But if it had been peppermint, I would have been like, uh-uh, uh-uh. But it smells like spearmint. So if you guys have ever had spearmint gum, if you've ever had spearmint gum, then that's what this smells like. And it, it's very subtle. So it's not like a strong, strong spearmint. It's... It's very subtle, like super subtle. So it, it doesn't leave like this strong, yucky after smell. Okay, so my hair is kind of air drying a little bit here. So I better get started. And I'm going to go ahead and clip up one side. Okay. Yeah, I don't want it to be dry. I didn't even bring a spray bottle. I'm, I'm totally unprepared today. Ooh, okay. I shouldn't need it though. My hair holds water. Okay. Thank you, regular clips. And I'm just going to go on ahead and section this off. But yeah, so I'm using, again, the Melanin Twist Elongating Style Cream. I guess I need to open it up and smell it so you guys can know what it smells like and feels like and all that stuff. Ooh. Okay. I generally, I don't towel dry my hair. I just let it drip. 
Like I put a towel around my shoulders, but I just let it drip. So my hair needs all the water it can get. This doesn't really sound like anything. This is what it looks like. I love the white products. I love how her containers are see-through and she gives you a lot. I don't know how much the products cost. I forget. I'm bad with prices, but I'm thinking I spent maybe for three products, maybe less than 50 bucks. This is such a, a nice packaging. I mean, she did a fantastic job on this. I'm very proud of her. Like natural 85, you did your thing. And then she has her signature on the back, which is really super cute. I love that. I love that. And I need to do like a, a, a formal review on there to put it on YouTube. So I can kind of, um, you know, give her a little boost, you know, so people can come in and see the review and go buy the product because I love supporting like um, black businesses and stuff. So Twisted Long Any Style Cream with Shea Butter and Natural Oils. And this is lightweight and it's designed to make your hair more manageable, reducing tangles and knots. Enjoy all the benefits of nourishing shea butter and your favorite nutrient rich oils without the easy, the greasy residue or your hair being weighed down. Perfect for twist outs and wash and goes. I hope it helps. She's so sweet. I love everything I see here. Use as little or as much as needed and we know what to do. So here we go. I'm going to start. Let me do one in the front first so we, you guys can see. Oh, where's my long, my long comb? I need to do sections. Hold up a second. Yeah, my hair is so bushy. Mm. So if you guys weren't on yesterday, we really didn't really talk about hair that much. We got off into other subjects, but I wanted to come on and give you guys another chance to just ask your questions, especially since a lot of you guys are still like in quarantine and you haven't been able to get to the hairstylist or you haven't been able to get to the beauty spot store or things like that. And you want to ask questions about things that you need to be doing for your hair while you're in quarantine. And it can be really super tough having to try to maintain because we have been short on so many things. I think I'm gonna do medium sized twist. I don't wanna do them too small because my hair is fine once it's twisted up and it, uh, it'll look anorexic. I don't wanna do anorexic twist. <laughs> So if you guys are just coming on, we are going to be twisting my hair today and chit-chatting about whatever you guys want to chit-chat and also answering hair questions. And I'm going to be doing part of this on YouTube and then I'm going to be doing the other part on Instagram. Half on YouTube, half on Instagram. And I'm literally using my camera as a mirror and I cannot see that well and I hate crooked parts. I will keep parting and parting and parting until it's not crooked anymore. I guess it doesn't matter that much. I mean, I'm not like trying to impress anybody <laughs> but if you're coming on say hello so i can know who you are hey guys thanks for coming in and joining me on my chit chat and twist live okay so i'm not going to get this part straight <laughs> uh, it's as straight as it's going to get how many of you guys like struggle with parting straight hi hi timberland uh, hi AAR, hello. Thanks for saying hello. It's good to see you guys on. How many guys, how many of you guys struggle? <laughs> you struggle with straight parting? Oh my God. It, it, it's like the worst. I cannot get my part straight. Now, if I'm not doing other stuff, I, I'm so disorganized today. Like my clips, I can't find them. I brought a whole thing. You know what? I can't find anything today. So we're just going to, we're going to get over this. Here we go. Here we go. We're going to get this. So I'm just twisting my hair up and I'm, I'm going to take medium sections. I don't even try to part. <laughs> well, not anymore. <laughs> yeah, I need to stop trying to part too because I'm struggling here. And I had clips, but I don't know what I did with them. I put them somewhere. So we're going to use combs like they used to do back in the day. You know how you used to get the comb and then you turn it backwards. <laughs> That's a clip for you. And so I'm going to take this section and put some of the cream on. Oh, it's nice and thick. Look at that. It's nice and thick and very creamy. And um, no sulfates, no parabens, no mineral oil, no formaldehyde, no plethate, pleth I don't know what that is. But I'm going to put some on my hair. I, at first, I, I was gonna, said I was going to straighten my hair because I need to trim it. But I wanted to wait just a little bit longer. I might wait another month before I straighten it. I don't know. But I, I have to do a review on some products that I purchased but um, I just wanted to give it a break for a little while. I just took out the braids and I really don't want to put any heat on it. Do you rope twist or, let me turn my camera over. Do you rope twist or regular twist? I regular twist, <laughs> I guess. What do you mean rope twist? I mean, I, I twist and I double twist. Like I twist and twist. 
Let me see if I can show you guys. So I kind of, what in the world is that? I don't need that hair in the way that's going to pull. So I twist and double twist. That way I can get like a nice um, even twist. And also it stays better that way and you get more definition. Hello, you're the one that had me buy the drink over and can't wait for it to come. I'll watch one of your reviews on it. Oh, awesome, Alicia. I think that's the rope twist. Okay, yeah, it gives you a neater look. So this is called the rope twist. I didn't know that. I, I just have always done it this way. But yeah, if you if you don't rope twist, then it winds up being a little bit puffier. And I don't really like puffy twists. <laughs> but I hope, but Alicia, the Joyco is everything that I like about it. It's everything that I say that it is. I love Joyco products. And you'll find with me that I'm not going to recommend something just because somebody sent it to me or just because somebody paid me to say, you know, hey, this is a good product. That, that's not even my personality. I recommend things I know that work. And Joyco has been a staple of mine for over a decade. And I have I used those products in my salon to help with the healthy hair makeovers that you guys have seen me do over the years. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see like a lot of the before and afters and all that stuff on the healthy hair makeovers I did on a lot of customers that grew their hair from super damaged, super, super damaged hair to beautiful, long, luscious hair. And the Joyco products is what I used. Can you give me some tips on getting healthy hair? Of course. So, um, Matrix Conditioner is a great recommendation that you, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you like it. So getting healthy hair just starts with, first of all, being patient with your hair and also believing that your hair can be healthy and that your hair can uh, thrive and grow. A lot of times what we believe is what comes out. And most times what we believe is what comes out of whatever it is we're trying to believe in. So if you don't believe that you can have healthy hair, then you ain't going to have it. So start with, first of all, believing that you can have healthy hair and believing that your hair is beautiful and then you'll start doing things that are healthy for your hair and your hair will start thriving and it'll start growing down your back. Um, to get healthy hair, one thing that you always need to do is always make sure that you are gentle with your hair. Don't pull, rip, tug at your hair and do things like that. Hey, Tamika, I love your content. Is it okay to use a hot heads cap if you have medium or high porosity hair for deep conditioning? Oh, yeah, you can use, um, is that like a deep conditioning cap? Yeah, you can use that. Mm-hmm. But just make sure that you're always being gentle to your hair. Make sure that you always take your time with your hair and make sure that you never skip the deep conditioning step. That's very important. And when you deep condition, be sure to use lots of conditioner. Don't use it sparingly. Like these products right here, they're not super cheap. So I only, I've only used it twice and look at how much. It's all halfway gone. I don't care because they're nice products. But always deep condition and make sure you get yourself on a good trim schedule. Mm -hmm. and use protective styles. Those are some tips I can give you. But guys, I mean, if you want more like thorough tips that I don't give you in videos and stuff, which I give out a lot of information videos, you can go to my website, yourpersonalhaircoach.com and click on the shop button. And there's lots of resources there. There's actually demonstrations and there's actually a webinar on there. And there's eBooks and stuff that you can use to kind of, to help you help steer you in the right direction as far as your healthy hair journey is concerned. And, and get on my email list. That way you can stay updated whenever I do any of the healthy hair classes and all that type of stuff. And I'm think, I think I'm getting ready to start something else soon. Is it okay to leave deep conditioner overnight? Yeah, but don't do it too often because you don't want to um, over condition your hair, which can happen because your hair can wind up being mushy and that is not cool. But yeah, you can. From time to time, it is okay to do that. Yeah, but don't over condition your hair. Some people are like, oh my God, I'm going to condition my hair every day. Don't do that. It's not necessary. Our hair ain't that dry. <laughs> You know, our hair is not the Sahara Desert. Sometimes it feels like it, though. But, yeah. So, deep conditioning is one step, step that a lot of people skip. You're welcome, Alicia. A lot of people skip it, and they shouldn't. They're like, oh, um, especially when they go to the hairstylist. They're like, oh, so, um, I didn't get my hair conditioned. She just put conditioner on and rinse it out real quick. I didn't get it deep conditioned because it was extra. And I'm like, pay the extra. If it's $20, $25, $30, pay the extra. It's worth it because... Your hair will do so much better when you deep condition it on a regular basis. I haven't twisted my hair in so long. Oh my gosh. But I'm loving this cream. It's so nice and it doesn't feel all greasy and sticky. It's very, very nice. I like it a lot. Okay. Oh, look, I got three done, y'all. Ah, boingy, boingy. Boingy, boingy. So, 
what I'm going to do is I came up with this idea. Um, and I'm going to do this through Instagram because in my Instagram does not get any love. I'm always on YouTube because YouTube is, uh, is my favorite platform. But I have a, a good amount of followers on Instagram too that miss out on a lot of stuff because they might not necessarily follow me on YouTube. And so I'm going to start going over there a little bit more. But I'm going to do this on Instagram. How often would you say to trim? A good trim schedule is every three months. But um, as I said before, I'm going to do half of this on Instagram. Now, they're probably going to like, Tamika is live. Tamika don't never do lives on Instagram. Add your personal care coach. And that information is in the down bar too. But I'm going to be doing um, a thing called Join the Journey. And it's going to be my hair journey. And you guys are going to be able to join in and do your hair journey at the same time with me. We'll do our hair journeys together. And I'll be doing a bunch of stuff like showing you guys the things I do to my hair on Instagram. Yeah, so that's going to be kind of fun. So you guys can see, you know, the the, the goings on that be going on with my hair. <laughs> and I'm really transparent. So if I'm having issues, I'm going to tell you. You know, if things are going well, I'm going to tell you. It doesn't matter. I'm just really like a super transparent person. And so... You know, I give you the good, the bad, and the ugly. I don't care one way or the other. Because you need to know that. You need to know that just because I'm a hair coach, it doesn't mean that I don't have hair issues. Because I do from time to time. Because I be doing stupid stuff in my hair, too. Have you ever tried Miss Jessie's products? I have. Um, they're too expensive. I want to say that. And I never really got results from them. They, they just felt like they were just full of chemicals and perfumes and stuff like that. I didn't care for them at all. So I did, I did, I bought a bunch of products from Miss Jessie's and I just, they didn't work. They, they seemed to me like they were really for people who have, you know, less kinky hair, but that makes sense because look at the developers of Miss Jessie. I think they were biracial people and so they based it off of their hair. I don't know, but they just didn't work that well for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's so many other choices that we have now, like so many other choices like hundreds of choices that we have now mm. look at that i'm twisting i'm twisting by the way i love the video you did on your daughter's damaged hair i pray she's doing better um tell her we were thinking of her oh thank you so much alicia i sure will tell her and and i'm glad you said that because that video video really helped encourage her and really helped push her to another level in her healing because she needed to know to that people are going through what she's going through. A lot of times, you know, oh, thank you, Nina. A lot of times, you know, we think we're the only one, like the devil, he really like wants us isolated. He really wants us isolated and he does a good job at it because mental illness, boys, is tripped out. And um, when you're feeling isolated, you think that you're the only one going through whatever it is. And in actuality, it's everybody around you is going through the same thing. It's just that people aren't talking about it. So, you know, and that's why I'm trying to be more transparent because I want to help people not just with hair. Yes, yes, he does. Not just with hair, but with everything, you know, everything I can. Hello, just came in. Does any cream work out for the twist or is there a specific one? You can use whatever cream, whatever your favorite cream is. It doesn't matter. But I'm using this one. This is a brand new one. And this is by Natural85, the famous YouTuber with all the beautiful hair. And it's called Melanin. Uh, Twist elongating style cream. And so far, I'm liking it. It's very light and nice. But yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm really, especially since this pandemic, I really have been, you know, my spirit has been tugging at me saying to me, you need to open up and to share your story. And that's what I'm trying to do because <laughs> I be going like ghost. I'm at a loss. I have natural hair, no chemicals in it, and I don't know what to do with it. Like what hair, what type of hairstyles do you want to wear, Lisa? What type of hairstyles do you want to wear? Do you want to wear natural styles? Do you want to wear straight styles? Do you want to um, alternate in between natural and straight styles? It really depends. Like, I don't know do my hair either, <laughs> you know? I'm, I'm not really that creative when it comes to hairstyles and stuff, believe it or not. Just because I'm a healthy hair, hair specialist doesn't mean I have creativity when it comes to hairstyles. Some people, they be running circles around. I'm like, how do you think of that? But I know how to grow some hair. I got growing hands. How often should you do an after G protein treatment on relaxed hair? You can probably, if you want to do it on a regular, I would say every six months. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if your hair is doing well, every six months. And that just helps rebuild it. But you really don't even need it that often. You could do it once a year and be okay. But um, every six months is good. I think I do one about every six months on my natural hair. 
So in relaxed tear, I think it's about the same, you know, just to help rebuild it and strengthen it. And that's what the Apogee treatment does. It really rebuilds and strengthens the hair. Just make sure, what helps your hair grow? Just make sure that um, you follow it up with lots and lots and lots of moisture. What helps your hair grow? And I answered that question previously, but I don't care because I like answering questions. Oh, that's awesome, Nina. Congratulations on that. Just want to get it flat ironed. Okay. So let's talk about, I need to get a pencil so I can write this down because I be up with that these questions like big time. Do I have anything to write on? To write? Anyways, I don't. So two questions. What helps your hair grow? And then talk about flat ironing. Okay. What helps your hair grow is being patient, as I said before, being sure to decondition on a regular basis, regular trims and protective styles. <laughs> have you used headgear? Yes, I, that was a long time ago. I've been out of my braces for some years. But let's talk about flat ironing. So you just want to flat iron, you just want to silk press flat iron your hair. That's cool. Because, um, oh, what am I? but yeah, just make sure that whenever you're flat ironing your hair, you use some type of, I've been wrapping my hair the whole time. I'm style challenged, but as long as it's well moisturized, that's right. Yeah, I'm style challenged too. I could do the same stuff. But whenever you're flat ironing, just make sure that you are um, starting off with freshly shampooed hair. And on, on Silk Press Day, I like to be sure I clarify. That way the conditioner can get really great absorption. And use a conditioner like that has a little, a little protein in it to get, like it helps you get that smoothness and that swing you want from your... Um, from your silk press, and I'll show you one in just a second. Let me get up, because I have a few conditions in here I can get up and show you. Oh, and I found my clips too. And I see a question, sorry. <laughs> Is there a specific straightener you use when you do a silk press? Okay, so this is a conditioner I love to use with silk presses, and it's um, Matrix Total Results So Long Damage. And this conditioner is a great mix in between um, moisture and protein you don't have to you don't have to go back and put more moisture into your hair with that you can use that as your deconditioner deconditioning treatment with your deconditioning treatment and keep going i hate when you get skinny like that yeah that's a great conditioner i love 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 i use other ones but that's a go-to one for me like super go-to oh man because if i if i take this apart then it's going to be frizzy uh, oh i'm not gonna worry about it i'm just gonna do this i'm just gonna finger coil it but yeah, that's a great conditioner. And as far as a straightener, I have several ones that I like to use. But in my videos, I'm going to show you the ones I always use. <laughs> and it's just because I'm lazy. <laughs> okay. Y'all. Now, generally with, with flat irons, I, use, I have to replace them like every six, eight months. You know, doing hair every day. But this particular one, I have had this one. I'm trying to think, probably at least about seven, eight years. No, nope, longer than that. Yeah, about seven, eight years I've had this one. And it's strange because normally they start busting down, but this is a Babyliss, Babyliss Nano Titanium Pro. And you see how beat up it is and how well loved it is, but it works like a charm. It has a little dial on here for, um, you know, for your heat. It goes up to 450. I really have used on 450, but this is my straightener that I go use all the time. Um, it's not my favorite per se, but I use it all the time because it's my second favorite. But my favorite would be the FHI uh, platform, the one with the red plates on it. You see me use that one a lot too in videos, but you probably see me use that one more. I like that one because it's heavy. I like it because it's heavy and it gives me that weight that I need to be able to really get that silk press without having to go over, you know, the section like a thousand times because I'm a one pass kind of girl. I do not like going over sections a thousand times, you know, one pass and I'm done. It's not necessary to keep like going over your hair over and over and over again, trying to get it straight. You take one pass over your hair and keep it moving. And if you do it right, it will come out nice. And I, I rarely ever go over 450. I did have one customer though. She would request that I turn it up to 450. And of course I had to oblige. But I rarely ever go over 410. Uh, I, it, yeah, I don't. I, I rarely ever, ever go to 450. I always keep it 410 and under. Usually I start at 375 and work my way up depending on the customer's hair. Because some customer's hair is a little bit more heat resistant and you have to go up. 
But for the customers who have, you know, just regular hair that's not heat resistant, I tend to keep it about three, 375, 390. Yeah, because you don't want to, you don't want to ever have hair that smells burnt or ever, you know, after you finish like straightening your hair, it shouldn't be like <laughs> elongated or anything like that. Okay, okay, there we go, y'all. Hey, how you doing? Okay. Look, I'm getting desperate. I, I need some water in here. I might have to, I might have to um bust out my water bottle. I got a water bottle sitting here. I might bust it out and and use that to. Whew, how that hurts. I can be so tender headed sometimes. Okay. Thanks for answering. I, you were you were headgear too. Girl, I hate the headgear. It was horrible. It was the worst thing ever, ever, ever. Like the worst thing. Okay. Yeah, these are medium size. It'll be easier to take down. Ooh. But yeah, as far as getting your hair healthy, you just you you've got to stay consistent with your hair care routine. You know, you can't do healthy things to your hair one day and then you know, the next time you shampoo and stuff or in between, you're putting heat on your hair every single day and stuff like that. You've got to minimize heat. You know, you've got to um, treat your hair with kid glove, protect the styles. A lot of people think that they're going to keep their hair healthy and, it, and they wear it down every day. That ain't happening because <laughs> your ends are going to wind up being, they're going to wind up suffering because they're being rubbed against the elements and everything can I talk to you about it on the Instagram direct? Talk to me about what? What do you want to talk to me about? Camilla? On Instagram? Because I get DMs all the time. I don't always answer them, but I get DMs all the time on Instagram. Like, every day. Yeah. Sometimes I, ch I check my Instagram. Sometimes I don't. Yeah. Sometimes I'll go weeks and I'll find a whole bunch of DMs. And I'm like, they probably don't even want to answer by now. <laughs> I love getting trims. The feel of smooth, healthy hair. Now, Timberland, I'm going to tell you something. Because if you love trims, you might be over trimming. <laughs> you might be over trimming. And that's not good either. Because people will be done trimmed off their progress and they wonder. Because I, I did I did a consultation recently with, with a customer. And she says every time she trims her hair, she's cutting off three inches. And I'm like, why do you keep cutting off three inches of the hair every time you trim your hair? That doesn't make any sense. You're cutting off all your progress because that's six months of progress. If you trim, if you trimming and you cutting off three inches, that means your hair is getting shorter and shorter. Stop doing that. And one thing about trimming is, you're never going to, you should not trim your hair even every single time you trim. The evenness comes when you're ready to even it up. Which, like, if you're on a healthy hair growing journey and you're trying to make it to your goal, say for instance, your goal is armpit length. No trim. When I need every three. Okay. Okay, that's good. So, um. Yeah, just trim your hair to trim. Don't trim your hair to even it up. I'm going to open up this water bottle. <laughs> Let me drink some first. Because I need a little moisture on my hair. It's starting to dry out. But trim your hair to trim. So if you cut, if you say, hey, I'm going to cut a half an inch, just go around your entire head and cut a half an inch. Don't even it up. You, you wait until you get to... A year in or or a year and a half into your growing journey and then you can say hey I want to give it a shape and that's when you see all the beautiful shapes you know on um on Instagram and YouTube and stuff that's when you see the beautiful shapes is when people want to go on ahead and and even up their hair but if you if you even up your hair if you even up your hair too much then you're going to be cutting out progress yes braids are a protective hairstyle mm -hmm. Yeah, if you even up your hair every time you trim, then you cannot progress because naturally our hair does not grow in even. Not one hair in your head grows at the same rate. Because have you have you guys ever had like one side of your head is always like an inch or two longer than the other one? And it's going to keep doing that. It's not going to stop. And so if you keep cutting that, then you're cutting off progress. But I always tell people is what happens is by some force of, force of nature, eventually both sides even up. Mm -hmm. See, it's happened to you. Eventually, both sides even up. That's not that boy. I can't see. Let me look in the mirror instead of using my camera. Let me look in the mirror because this is getting too uneven. Yeah. There we go. I see it now. Yeah, but don't, don't, don't trim to. Ooh, ow. 
don't trim to even, trim to trim. And then about a year in, after you've done three or four trims, go ahead and give it a shake. That's what I always tell people. And you can cut off whatever you need to give it that shape. And some people like the V-shape. Some people like the U-shape. I prefer the U-shape. Some people like it blunt straight across. I don't really like blunt straight across hair. I, I do prefer for the ends to be a little less blunt. But, you know, that's my personal preference. So, like, if I have a customer who doesn't have, like, super blunt ends, it doesn't bother me because everybody doesn't have all that thick hair like that. But for whatever reason, society, um, like, really puts people down when they have ends that are thinner but the thing is like everybody doesn't have all that big old thick hair you know and when if you want to get those super blunt ends you have to cut way more even even though those ends might not be split and that's not fair either you know so y'all know me i'm a conservative trimmer i'll be trying to save customers feelings for sure because i don't want anybody sitting in my chair and leaving crying and then they go behind the scenes and be like that girl cut off all my hair i ain't never going back to her and i'm telling everybody that she sucks and da, da, da. that's not happening i really care more about people's feelings than i do about hair because one, one thing about hair is that yes if you don't trim for long periods of time it is going to split up but it's not going to happen in a couple of months if you if you baby those ends if you if you um if you deep condition and oil your ends and moisturize your ends and stuff, that'll help preserve them until the next trim. And then you can cut off a little bit more. Or either you can go into protective style and that'll, that'll help preserve even more. So you don't have to cut everything at once, even though we're made to believe that. But if that was the case, then none of the healthy hair makeovers I ever did would have worked. Because that's exactly what I did. I would, I would, I would do baby trims. Like a customer would come in with super damaged hair and I wouldn't cut off all their hair down to the quick all at once because first of all i mean we're we're emotionally tied to our hair and a lot of women they'll feel they'll feel like a boy they'll feel ugly like if you cut off too much hair at once so if you baby them if you baby them into it then it kind of helps like soothe ease some of that anxiety and tension that goes along with having to get like a super haircut so I try not to do people like that. I try to always be considerate and I don't want to be bullying because some people will bully you into your haircut and be like, I'm not doing your hair if I'm not going to cut. And that's not fair. You know, they want to look nice too. And they shouldn't have to be bullied into a haircut to get their hair done. Mm. Yeah, I can tell I've been pulling my, I've been pulling my hair because look at them, my BDBs, they short. Yeah, I had some anxiety during this whole pandemic and I just been pulling my hair whatever was coming out of the braids, which is not good, but I'm a hair puller. That's what I do. I, I, I pull hair. Mm. How many guys out there are hair pullers? <laughs> I am a total hair puller. I think I even pulled some of my neck down to the quick too. I'm going to have to grow that back. Anytime I have anxiety or fears or worries or whatever, I start pulling or stress. I start pulling at my hair. Yep, and I pulled that down to the quick. I'm going to have to put some edge gel. But some people, they want that to happen so they can get them baby hairs. I don't, I don't bit more care about baby hairs than the man in the moon. Mm. I mean, I'll put them on, but some people, they have to have their baby hairs regardless. I ain't the one. It takes too much work to do all that, and then it doesn't stay, and then you have product build up. Mm. If I wear my edges out just like this, I don't care. <laughs> I show my BBs. I show my BBs. <laughs> So, since we're talking about edges, guys, what are some of you guys' favorite edges gels? I would like to know. I have several that I use. Um, so, which ones do I use? I use the Hicks Total Transformation still, and that was the first one that was ever created. I still use that one. That one's still really good. And I also use... Um, the Design Essentials, the Design Essentials, da, 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 Design Essentials something, I forget what it's called. I use that one. I think it's called Sleek Edge or something like that. And then I use the She Bomb Collection. I don't, I use, I have the Edge Gel, but I don't use that one as Edge Gel. I use the Glaze, the She Bomb Collection Glaze for the edges because it seems to me like Glaze does a lot better job on edges than the Edge Gel does, which is very strange. Mm hmm. So I use the Sheet Mountain Collection and that one be slicking them edges down and holding them, boy. What products are you using right now on your twist? Okay. Hi, Damaris. I'm using the Melanin. Hey. Natural 85 product on my hair and I'm loving it. 
I am loving it so far. It's making my hair super soft. Woo! This little thin piece in the front. <laughs> Woo! Lord. I'm just going to finger pull the rest of that because there ain't no sense in me trying to twist that. I haven't found any. They all start to itch and flake on me. Yeah, they will tend to flake, especially if you... um you know, use it over and over and over again. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll reactivate it with water. I'll just get my, my toothbrush and I'll just wet my toothbrush and then slick it back with the water and then put it put a scarf on top of it. Sometimes I don't reapply because if you reapply, it's definitely going to flake. But one thing I notice, it looks healthy, beautiful and moisture and healthy. Thank you. One thing I notice is that um, like the glaze that I use on my hair, it does cause buildup, but not in the beginning. It's when I keep adding like more and more and more of it to my hair. Yeah, but those other edge gels I mentioned, they, they work fine, but as soon as you get out the door good, your hair starts like reverting back. And that's one thing I don't like about edge gel. What do you, what do you use, a silk scarf or bonnet to keep your hair looking fresh? Um, It depends on what hairstyle I'm wearing. A lot of times I'll, I'll tie my hair down with a scarf, a silk scarf, and then I'll put a bonnet on top. To give it like that extra added protection you know what i'm saying because stuff be coming off during the course of the night you know it does stuff be coming off in the course of the night so i'll, I'll use both but um a silk scarf every time i've used just a silk scarf it always came off and so i, I double time if i'm wearing a silk press then i'm definitely wearing the silk scarf bonnet combination but if i'm if i'm doing like these twists or whatever i'm just gonna put a bonnet on yeah I'm curious to see how long my hair is. I don't know. I haven't measured it in a while. <clears throat> Thank you for this education chat. Oh, you're very welcome. Anytime. I'm going to be doing more of these because my mentors tell me I need to be more visible. And so that's what I'm trying to do instead of hiding like I always do. I'm a hider. I'll be hiding. Yeah, but I really enjoy you guys. I really enjoy chatting with you guys and sharing information and all that. I, I do love it. I'm a teacher at heart. And I want to, you know, help as many women as possible and men who want to grow their hair and, you know, help as many people as possible grow their hair to the lengths they want and get it healthy. It, it, and, and one thing I'm noticing, too, is that people just don't know how to. They don't. They don't know how to do it. And um, for the longest time, I, I felt like I had to just teach hairstylists, you know, but in this society, there's more and more people who want to take, you know, their hair care into their own hands. They just don't know what direction to go into. So, I mean, there's plenty of people teaching hairstylists. I don't know about hair care, but there's plenty of people teaching hairstylists. And I want to be the one to teach, you know, the non-hairstylists. So you can not have to be relying on going to the hairdresser all the time because it's expensive. And I know it is because in my salon, I think the lowest price service I had was $95. That was for a silk press. I think that was the lowest. If you wanted to just come in and get a shampoo and trim, I mean, that shampoo blowout and trim, I think that might have been $75.80. But yeah, a silk press was $95. And that's kind of expensive. That That's somebody's like water bill or something. I mean, if you have it, that's fine. But if you don't have it, it's, it's a lot of money and, you know, if you want to try to silk press your hair at home, I don't have no problem with that. Because my customers, I'll be like, look, I, I, you know, come in here, let me silk press your hair, and I can just show you steps. I ain't care. Because <laughs> everybody deserves a, a chance to learn how to do their own hair, in my opinion. You shouldn't be totally relying upon somebody else. And the, 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 um, the, the, um, the, the pandemic showed us that that's the case because all of the hair salons in the U.S. closed. Now, there were some hairstylists out there who were um, still making house calls, stuff like that. I wasn't going to be doing that. But with all the hairstyles being closed, a lot of people were running around looking crazy. And they were like, oh, my God, I don't know what to do to my hair. And so in situations like that, when your hairstyles are not available, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? So that's where I come in to teach you how to care for your hair. And if you guys want resources, more more detailed resources, you can go on my website, yourpersonalhaircoach.com. You can click the shop button and I have resources there that will show you. I have video demonstrations on there. I have webinars. I have ebooks and all types of things on there. And I also do one-on-one -on -one hair coaching 
with you. So I, I get on the, the video call with you and we go over your hair care, routine, hair care routine and we tweak it and get it to where you can start getting on the grow. So if you guys are interested in that, going over there and, um, you know, sign up for a consultation. And that, you know, doing this is fine, but th this information I give you is very general. It's not specific to, you know, your personal hair care routine. I can't give you specific information to your personal hair care routine because I can't see your hair and I'm talking to everybody. I can't just zone out and be like, oh yeah, I'm answering, you know, just this question just for your hair care. I don't know enough about it. So that's why I developed the online coaching. So if you guys are interested in online coaching, yourpersonalcarecoach.com, go on over there and sign up. The link is there. Yep. But yeah, I think more people need to take their hair care into their hands, you know, and not rely so much on hairstylists because, especially because of this situation when it's just not possible for us to get hairstyles because they're not available. You're like, oh my God, I haven't washed my hair in like three months. <laughs> yeah. So you got to eventually wash your hair to keep it healthy. And you got to know how to do it. There's a lot of people who do not know how to wash their hair. I, I, I am actually doing an ebook right now that I'm almost finished with. And it actually teaches you, like it gives you step by step on how to wash your hair. There are so many people who don't know how to wash their hair. And I never realized, you know, that that particular step, you know, people didn't know. Yay. Hey. Hi. Thank you. Thank you, Ali. But yeah, people do not know how to wash their hair properly. And so I said, you know what, let me do an ebook. And I'm, I'm going to be writing ebooks on more separate topics because you might just want to know about low porosity or you might just want to know about how to condition, stuff like that. So that's why I'm doing those particular things. Ooh. Yeah, they looking juicy. Ooh, child. Hey, there we go. All right. So that is finished. Okay. Woo. Oh my goodness, that took me 42 minutes. <laughs> mm. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna open up for some more questions. And if you guys don't have more questions, I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to Instagram because I'm gonna be going over to Instagram after this and finish over there at your personal hair coach and finish over there so I can give my Instagram some love. Which the last thing I posted up was I did a um. Um, I wrote an ebook. Of, uh, this one was free because I felt like people need to get the information and it's called Quarantine Hair. Thank you, Amaya. It's called Quarantine Hair and basically it was just giving you information on what to do to your hair in case of emergencies like this when you can't get to the hairstylist, you know, and so I was giving tips on that. But yeah. Okay, guys. So 60 more seconds and um, meet me over at Instagram if you want to continue this conversation <laughs> at your post personal hair coach. <laughs> Yeah, look at these twists. Oh my gosh, I haven't seen my hair twist in so long. How long after Brazilian smoothing can you do it again? I did the Kavita hair smoothing 12 weeks, but how'd you mess it up? Oh, I'm curious to know. How did you mess it up? Because I, I, was, I would say do it every six months, but the person who's doing your hair is probably going to tell you less time because they want the money. Hello, Smig. I miss you doing your daughter's hair. I really enjoy the mother and daughter bond that you guys have for each other. Thank you very much. Do you think you could make a tutorial about how to alter a flat iron tension? Oh, that's on my list. I'm, I'm, it's on my list. My straightening iron fried and died on me. I'm sorry. Yeah, the, the, um, the tightening of the, of the um, flat iron is on my list. I have a few things on my list I'm going to do, but that, that's definitely one because people, I've had several people ask me for that tutorial. But thank you. Yes, Tierra and I, we have a really strong bond, and um, it's so funny because. Um, you know, she's working. Well, she was working. She, she's not working anymore, but she took some of her money and she bought me a Mother's Day gift. This is the first Mother's Day gift that she's bought me with her own money. And she got in the mail yesterday and I was just like so touched. I was like, oh my God, my baby. And it was not a cheap gift. So she's like, I always wanted to buy my mom something extravagant. And she bought me one of my favorite things, which is something from Tiffany's. And I was like, oh my gosh, oh my God, my baby bought me Tiffany's. <laughs> We thank you. I appreciate you so much for being so real and so patient. Oh, you're very welcome. You're very welcome. Okay, guys. So I guess I'm going to end it here. And <laughs> love you guys. Love you. Your personal hair coach. Instagram. Love you. <laughs> I could not complete it. Oh, I'm sorry. Love you too, guys. You made me feel so special. See you in a second. <laughs>